Hello, everybody, and welcome to Speak Out, the Outright Podcast. I'm your host, JQ. You can use any pronouns for me. I'm Emma. I use they, she, he. I'm Mark. I use he, him. And today we're talking about queer literature, which is great because <laughs> Mark has brought a giant list of books with gay people. He brought in Mark's it. big gay book list. I swear to God, it's like 10,000 words. The like, doc is called Mark's big gay book list. Hit me with a random entry from the from the gay book list. Yeah, give us your notes. Um, well, I'd say just my favorite one of all time is um, it's like a classic, Red, White, Royal, Blue by Casey McQuiston. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, I think, the first like actually queer book that I ever read. So oh, it just has like wow. a special place in my heart Cute. for that reason. And the protagonist is also like a poli sci major, so I'm like oh, God, no way. It's, <laughs> me. it's, it's literally real. you. <laughs> and then like one of them is British. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the second one of them is like a fucking monarch and the other one is like I'm not aiming a for that, but I'm open or to something. it. <laughs> like the kid of the president, I think. Yeah, okay, yeah. True. It's basically nepotism the book. Star crossed yeah. so oh, damn. <laughs> awkward. Well, historically being the child of the president has been pretty useful for becoming the president. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> oh, thoughts? Thoughts, thoughts on the book? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I have uh, read it. I read Casey McQuiston's uh, one of one of their other yeah. books, One Last Stop, which is I liked it. So yeah, I've been meaning to read the rest of their stuff, but I think this is their first, and I wrote a whole article about it. So I'm like really, really obsessed with this one. Read the article. I'm really obsessed with this one specifically. Um, I just like that it's like enemies to lovers, and I think oh, they're um, enemies. Yeah, it's an enemies to lovers, or at least it's a rivals to lovers type thing, just because. Mm-hmm. No, I want the UK yeah. and the US to go to war in this book. Actually, that would be kind of fun. Yeah, I, I want, like, I hope there's, like, a alternate universe somewhere where Casey, uh, mm-hmm. Casey McQuiston would probably write about that, where, like, they end up, like, not falling in love and instead just, like, lead a Make war against each other. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're they the ones leading the war. They have that much influence war. over the politics? <laughs> oh, well, apparently yeah, they do in the you book. touch me. <laughs> 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 Um, but yeah, other than that, it's just, it's a special place in my heart because it's the first one I ever read. Nice. Mine was probably Simon, what? Oh, fuck. Love I, Simon and the Homo Sapiens Agenda. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Sam, Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda? That's the mm. first one that I distinctly remember, but I feel like I've probably read gay books before that. I feel mm. like... One of them was bad, and I didn't finish it, but I did start it. It was about, like, a non-binary person. But it was, I didn't like it, so. Oh, L. Man. I think it was called, like, Them or something. Anyways. The title was Them? Or something. That's so original. <laughs> like, know, right? like, <laughs> a book about a non-binary person. And it's him. It's, it's Them. <laughs> Books. Non-binary high schooler. Sorry. It just feels like such a lazy title. Yeah. No, that's entirely it's fair. It's like uh, writing a whole movie with women in it and calling it her. Yeah, or That's Little Women. About... But if there was a... <laughs> Imagine writing a book about four young women and calling it calling Little it Women. Calling it Little Women. Right? <laughs> Get it together, man. I mean, what the fuck is next? Writing a book about a guy called Frankenstein and calling it Frankenstein. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Better titles. <laughs> yeah, Mary Shelley. Yeah. I don't care if you invite invented sci-fi. <laughs> My phone hates me. Um, I have a whole thing about, like, a lot of the most, like, influential books, the most, one of them, all of the most influential queer books ever, most of them I've never read. Like, especially... Who reads Maurice? No offense. What the hell is Maurice? Oh, it's like an old ass, it's from, I would say, the mid to late 1800s that has gay people in it. Is it, like, one of the first, would you say? Yeah. Well... No, people have been writing about gay people since forever. Well, yeah. I think the first one is probably, like, the Epic of Gilgamesh. Shit, Dude. I didn't realize that was... I didn't realize that. Have you seen the it. kind of shit Gilgamesh says about Enkidu? No. Is it, I is it, read it. Is it, like, a... Does it have, like, political themes? Do you remember? Gilgamesh and Enkidu? Uh, kind of. No, no, because I could have sworn in my political theory class, my TA was literally, like... Oh yeah, we could read about all these like influential books throughout history, like the Bhagavad Gita, for example. And then one of the things I swear he said was Gilgamesh. I I just that name stuck out to me a lot, and I've never heard that name before. So now I'm just like that's my association with it. I 
found out it's symptoms of being human, so I was fucking wrong. <laughs> but it still wasn't good. I mean, okay, that- I read it when I was like, t- like fucking twelve or something. So maybe it just wasn't my style. That's the that's the book about the non-binary person. Yeah, that I don't even remember the plot of. Like L, the um, hair. It's it's it um, cements hair, it in yeah. a certain era, I think. Emo fringe. Yeah. Did they emo assume fringe. all non-binary people <laughs> emo fringes? I think they no, were. I think, I think they, the I think protagonist was... probably did. Yeah, it would be yeah. kind of funny though. Um, <laughs> like that's the stereotype. Yeah, new new non-binary stereotype. You have to have an emo fringe. <laughs> you have to I have... think I remember it being pretty pretty, you know, baby's guide to non-binary people. It was like I use. Maybe they were gender fluid. I don't remember, yeah. but it was it was you know, yeah. It was one inter- it was one person's story. And all gender fluid people have twenty ten Anthony from Smosh hair. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> all gender fluid people have twenty tens Dan and Phil hair. Get yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> that very much is, isn't it? But yeah, I have a whole thing of like, re. Well, I'm uh I by um, most iconic queer literature, I mostly mean like. The most iconic stuff within our generation like especially the like uh male times like the male times male um gay romance books the most iconic ones like the simon ones i've never mm-hmm. read i've never seen or read heartstopper i've well i don't know how iconic call me by your name is i don't know if it's worth watching anymore especially it's with the border it, it's I'm of the opinion that it's yeah. not really queer rep so much. I mean, yeah. like, it yeah. technically is, but also, like, that age gap is way too fucking big. More like groomer rep. I yeah, think. exactly. <laughs> like, it's, I yeah. mean, I don't know. I think analyzing literature through a lens of, is it re- representation TM mm. is uh, often reductive to the point of being unhelpful. That's fair. Yeah. I just didn't, I was just, I just thought it was fucking wild. Yeah. But I do appreciate that, um... At least some books or like some media in general are trying to emphasize like I don't know if that's if that's their primary goal, but they are depicting ways in which queer relationships can still be problematic or abusive in a certain way. Like I think Interview with a Vampire is a big one. And um I, I think that helps I guess normalize queer relationships in a not very um, ideal, but a constructive way too, because it shows that re- queer relationships are like any other relationship, and that they can go wrong, or they can um, lead to like um, abuse, or they are just in that way. Fundamentally, they work the same way as most other relationships. Yeah, it's like a holistic view. Yeah, yeah, but also, can we maybe have less? I would rather that the most iconic queer books not be ones portraying abusive relationships. Yeah, and that'd be ideal. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> I mean, sure, but also I feel like the most iconic straight books are also kind of oh, fucked that's up true. a lot of the time. Yeah, so I, like, I think there's... <laughs> like, I feel like there's we're also using things. iconic in different ways. Yeah, we yeah. definitely <laughs> are. I just realized that as soon as I said it, I was like, oh, we are not talking about the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Um... It's okay, I know Twilight is very iconic straight book. <laughs> what? If any book Wait, is why did you to, have to reassure me Wait, Twilight? that one? If any book is straight lit, though, it's Twilight. Yeah, exactly. It's it's really ironic, because I never I never read the Twilight books, but I've seen the movie. I saw the I saw half of the first movie before mm-hmm. I had to, like, switch it off, because I couldn't stand it. The but like, uh, are actually better than the books. The books are a fucking drag, I gotta really? say. I read the first one, yeah. The first Anyways. movie is adequate. Um, and then it goes sharply downhill, and then the third one is the worst, and the fourth one is also bad, but at oh least, God, like, Robbie Malek four. is there. I that was four. <laughs> Robbie but, Malek, true. But I felt like, even though, obviously, they don't portray any, like, gay relationships in, in, in the entire, like, series, I don't think. No. Like, <laughs> nothing, the is, nothing is true. Stri- these two, like, fruity, like, so I think they're actually from Romania or something. They might be from Russia, though. And they're like, Why is oh, that a stereotype? Why is that a thing for like? Because, okay, what? First of all, because the wait, vampire. Wait, why is that? First of all, the vampire a myth originates in Eastern Europe. Oh, the oh, vampire. that makes sense. I thought you meant fruity Eastern Europe. Oh no, why I don't think. No, 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 no. I, I meant like Eastern Europe is associated with fruitiness. Mm. That was asked. That that was my question. Why is that like a weirdly prevalent stereotype? Okay, yeah. First of all, the vampire myth originated in Eastern Europe. Mm-hmm. Second of all, 
uh, the books would popularize the vampire myth for Western European audiences, drew on that, um, and also did this sort of like, yeah, like exoticizing. Right. Like, oh, Eastern Europe, it's not quite as bad as Asia, but they're still not like us. (laughs) (laughs) However racist you think 19th century people were, like, they always find a way to surprise (laughs) me with how racist they are. Yeah. Cool. Oh, so many of those fucking vampire I so they're they're so queer coded to me personally. Yeah. Um why are you as a says... man sucking another man? <laughs> <laughs> That's, not what I mean. That's not what I meant. <laughs> no, I just got the vibe. <laughs> specifically about like Dracula the book mm-hmm. I don't really know a ton about the vampire canon beyond Modern that genre. yeah <laughs> imagine me knowing things about pop culture <laughs> crazy what a wild idea um but there's definitely this idea that like Dracula is the invisible other like oh he's evil and predatory but mm-hmm. uh, also he looks just like you Ooh. and although this is probably playing more into like British myths about um eastern europeans it also does come off like dracula is queer right right yeah i think we talked about that in the vampire episode right he penetrates your homeland (laughs) (laughs) oh my god he spreads contamination with him (laughs) i don't know guys i don't know guys let's think about it it. jonathan harker is gay to me though Wait, Do I have good? At, he's the main character of Dracula. Oh. He's the main character of the first part of Dracula. Um, Does he die? Yeah. Man, we can't win. <laughs> <laughs> Man, bury your face for real. <laughs> Look, it is a horror novel. Well, yeah, no, that's fucked up. Only they they should they need to make sure that all the gay people live in all horror movies so that that's it's true. not bury your gays. Oh my god, Brent speaking Stoker of which, was I... probably gay, though. Okay, go on. Real. This is not queer lit. I'm derailing the conversation. Sorry. <laughs> um, I still haven't fucking seen Love Lies Bleeding because they're not showing it at any of the Westwood theaters. I want to see it. What is Love Lies What's Bleeding? That? It's a oh, new movie. It's about... Actually, I think they're wrestlers, but they're, like, not professional. Yeah, and it's fucking Kristen Stewart, and they're gay. They're Whoa! Gay for... No. Oh my god. How have none of you... <laughs> Neither of you heard about this? Wait, Kristen Stewart plays... Like a gay wrestler? Yes. They do like wrestling, not oh like professional God. wrestling, but like what the fuck is this? Okay, I need the movie. Right? Whoa. They're like they're gay and it's like also kind of a horror slash thriller. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Anyways, that's all. Um movie. Oh, there's a there's a sh- there's a flower called Love Lies Bleeding, yeah. which is silly. Oh. That's why I said other than the- yeah. Yeah. Well, anyways, but, okay. that's the it's movie, and I want to see it so bad. Have names that go very hard. Yeah. Like real. I think this is important. It is important. Like like the flower language thing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Anyways, anyways, I want to see it, but they're not showing it anywhere, and I keep trying to get my friend to go see it, but none of our schedules are not lining up. So. R.I.P. Yeah. Fucked up. R.I.P. R.I.P. I'll see it eventually. What a cemetery boys. Oh my god, you put that on your list too. Yeah, my mom really likes that book. She keeps really? telling me to read it. I think so. Anyway. Discuss. Well, you haven't read this. I have not, though. No. But I don't want so to So I'm imagining be... boys in a graveyard. No well, way. Yeah, is no. it one of them, like, dead and... Yeah, the basic be... premise is one of them is a ghost, and then the other is, like, this, like, I think 16, 17-year-old, like, um, trans, uh, trans boy who lives in, like, this big, like, Hispanic household, and then the the book is taking place during, like, the Day of the Dead, so obviously they're doing, they're having a lot of preparations for that, and then the book just follows him, like, on the days leading up to the event, because the whole thing with his family is they can see ghosts. They have, like, this special power to see ghosts, so nice. I like it. leading it up to the sense. Day of the Dead, they, like, are seeing more and more, like, ghosts popping up, and then mm-hmm. that's how, like, the love story starts. It's, it's a, a it's also a big, like, um, what what is it like? Uh, the ghost is a big himbo, so I think that's, oh, perfect. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's one of the reasons I love that so much. I think we need more himbos. So oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really recommend it, and I think like beyond just um, actually I wrote about this in this list too. 
um, just beyond like um, the amazing trans mascarp, I think it just really um, portrayed beautifully like the nuances um, in like um, coming out to your family as both like a trans mask person in a culture where there's like this big, I guess, like emphasis on having a manly and like aggressive personality and at least how the book depicts it yeah. and um uh, and, and since cultures like that have such a big emphasis on family that creates like additional complications for how this character goes about like um like uh, uh convincing his family to accept him more and like understand what he's going through because i think they are um they they already know that he's trans in the book but they none of them like quite understand it or truly accept it until like the end of the book where everything like i guess resolves na- like happily. resolves yeah. like happy ending type stuff so but i do highly recommend it yeah i'll give a look i'm sure it's at the los angeles public library why is it los angeles public library i, I love that girl i love that yeah girl also. god i am literally <laughs> am i are you allowed to share library cards is that okay <laughs> Because uh, if know, it's not, probably. then I definitely don't do that. But if it is okay, then I definitely do do that. <laughs> okay, yeah, right. It's why, well, why can't you? I don't know. I just store get multiple. The library card. Wait, why can't you get a library card? No, my friend. Oh, that doesn't live here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Hypothetically. <laughs> I really don't think. I think that the libraries just want you to go to the library. So yeah. So true. Well, I feel like the library also wants like tax money. That well, is yeah. fair. Um, yes. Which I also don't pay, to be fair. I just hey, live here. Hey, real talk. <laughs> I, Unemployed I, life. <laughs> true, student life. I really do love that, though, because I think, um, like, back in the Philippines where I'm from, like, there aren't... I mean, it's not that they're actively trying to censor queer books or anything, but they just don't sell as much of it. So even... It's nice that I can use, like, the Libby app. Yeah. Even while I'm in oh, the yeah. Philippines using real. my LA library card, because then I can access, like, this plethora of um queer books for free for one which is a lot better oh, and yeah. um uh it's a lot easier to find the more i guess nuanced books that aren't really as mainstream because i think my bookstore mostly has the the bookstores um where i'm from us- usually just have the what you would call like the the, the baseline gay books like they have simon Ver- simon the homo sapiens agenda they have Heartstopper, and then the this ends with the this ends with us or something. Uh, that sounds right. I don't know that yeah. one. I know but that they. I know the one that's like they both die in the end. I didn't realize. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think it's that. Average or maybe there's just multiple books with that name. Slash J. Which, yeah. I well, <laughs> yeah, because you know it's in the title. Uh. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. I know. I, I love say, libraries. Anyways, what were you saying? Oh, I was gonna say, I feel like you had something about how you feel like you don't see enough queer, like, speculative mm-hmm. fiction, but I feel like, honestly, and maybe it's just how I select for it, but I feel like I, it's a genre where I see a lot of queerness, oh. which is really nice, because historically it's been pretty male-dominated and pretty white-dominated, and it's really nice that there are a lot more diverse voices um, entering the, the sci-fi and fantasy space, which yeah, is where yeah. I spend most of my reading time. Yeah. Like, Afrofuturism is, like, a thing. Oh, oh yeah. Real. Yeah. Good shit. I've been meaning to read more of that. Yeah, Good, like, same. Even, even just beyond the, the um, subject matter, I think, the, the covers they make for it are always so Oh my cool. god, true, yeah. I like, love, they're like, so a, well made. I know, I can, like, picture it. I don't know how to describe it, but I can, like, picture it in yeah. my mind. Like, the, like, I don't know, I feel like, like the 80s style, like... Yeah, sci-fi book covers. Like yeah, the they fuck paintings. I guess. Yeah, they kind of look like paintings. I actually really dislike like okay, and maybe it's just because my dad has a whole bunch of them in the house, and I'd be like, "Ooh, good book," and it's like, "No, boring." Not good book. <laughs> okay, damn. <laughs> Look, okay, some of these writers feel like they were paid by the word even though they were writing in, like, 1979, Ooh, Okay, know? I do hate that shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the Ooh. word they were paid by was to sound as much like they didn't think women were people as possible. Oh. <laughs> Boo! Misogyny! So much misogyny. This is Yikes. where my Piers Anthony beef comes from. I have, Piers An- I have beef with Piers Anthony. I feel like you've mentioned Who's that Piers before. Anthony? Yeah, he's a very prolific fantasy writer. 
Um, also a little bit of sci-fi, but mostly fantasy. Are there any, like, what, what are his most popular titles? Oh, uh, he read the Xanth series. Um, <laughs> Fantasy Florida. Whoa! Uh, he also wrote something like Incarnated Immor- Immortals, which is like, oh, like, the main character is a guy who becomes death. Um, True. Like, Just he like... takes up the mantle of the guy who's death. Nice. Uh, Good for him, question and mark? his love interest has... <laughs> maybe one personality trait on a good day. Cool. <laughs> when, he, when he takes up the mantle of being, like, the death or, like, the Grim Reaper. Yeah, yeah, like, it becomes his job to, like, collect souls and shit. <laughs> that reminds me of, like, the Santa Claus movie, where it's, like, <laughs> no, it's, it's a lot. Like, it's a lot. Like <laughs> Isn't Claus. it called the Santa Claus? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Santa Very Claus. Okay. Santa Claus with an E, yeah. <laughs> It's Santa Claus, but gay it's and about like that. It's like that, but with death. <laughs> no, it's not gay. Not gay. Oh, Just sorry. It's heterosexual. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely heterosexual. Oh, fuck. <laughs> heterosexual slash negative in this case. Yeah. It's okay to be straight, but not if you're Piers Anthony. Nope. Oh, not, not if, Or if you're anything like him. Um, but, yeah, I think... Um, I, I do agree with... You, with I, I do agree that uh, even in queer media, there seems to be like a like I I don't think I can speak for varying like um, gender identities or sexualities, but I can definitely speak on like um, it feels very um, white dominated. Um, I think that's primarily a problem in like movies and TV shows because my at least my theory is that. The reason why we're seeing more racial diversity in queer books is because the process for getting a book published is generally a lot, um, not shorter, but it takes... It involves uh, fewer people. Yeah, it involves fewer people, and it doesn't require, like, any major, like, approval to be officially created and published, or at least it doesn't require that same amount. Yeah, well, like, you especially don't have with, to, like, like, Amazon self-publishing, which is where a lot yeah, of the romance industry is today. Yeah, interesting. so I think it's largely, like, a, like maybe the CEOs of these, like, uh, t- of the companies that produce these TV shows and these movies, they, and one way or another, they get a say in what their company um, makes. Mm-hmm. So whether consciously or not, well, also. they tend to favor um, media, even queer media, with, white protagonists and i think um with books you get a lot more freedom in how you want to depict your characters and also it requires less visual aid generally so you can leave more you can leave more stuff up to the reader and yeah in general there's a lot less um external input involved in well, whatever it is you're creating when it comes also, to Also, there's a lot less of a like risk factor for companies because books yeah. cost so much less than television does yeah, yeah. And they also have much smaller audiences, like even for popular books. Yeah, and that I think they don't have to worry about appealing to like a mainstream audience because when it comes to books, it's a lot less, I think, centralized on yeah. like a specific um, demographic. So whoever wants to read that book can just go buy it and like take it home. You don't... There isn't like a lot of advertisement for books, and there's no big emphasis on making sure it appeals to like the widest amount of people possible. It's just like um, whoever is interested in it will just take it up. Anyway, do you want to talk about the lock tube? Oh my I god, want I want to talk lock-tube. about the lock tube. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm, 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 like, I'm giggling, kicking my feet right now. Oh my god, I love it when gay people hate each other. <laughs> what? And they don't hate each other like pussies. They beat the <laughs> fuck out of each other. It's not just like verbal quips and shit. They are hurting each other. They it's don't... great. Um, <laughs> like pussies. Dude, yeah. Fuck me. Oh. <laughs> Oh. The night that, oh, when it's all in second person. <laughs> Dude, the reveal about it being in second Anyways, person is so good, though. It's crazy. And I can only tell you that there is a reveal, because There's that's a, a spoiler yeah. I think is would be... Would be kind of big. Yeah. You kind of have to figure it out. I yeah. love about those books is that, to me personally, because I'm not always very good at understanding things, they make no sense for, like, two-thirds of the book. And then it all starts... Like, okay, not no sense, but I'm also just, like, 
genuinely, what the fuck is going on? Okay. Especially, I feel like, like Gideon made sense for most Gideon of Gideon made sense, but I was not picking up what, what Tamsin Moore was putting down. Like, I was not solving the mystery. Um, I was just confused. I think. Well, I guess I wasn't solving the mystery, but I wasn't, like, expecting to solve the mystery, because it's a mystery. But I was, like... I didn't... I think I didn't know it was gonna be a mystery, so oh. I thought I was just missing the cues. Sorry. <laughs> Oopsie. Or well, maybe I just really needed to solve the mystery and then couldn't. It's not really packaged like a mystery, I guess. It's yeah. packaged like a fantasy novel. Yeah. I didn't know it was a mystery at all. I thought it was a fantasy novel. It's sort of like it, Disco Elysium, where from the way people talk about it, you're like, this isn't a mystery, and then yeah. you like, experience it, and it's like, oh, this is a mystery. No, okay. literally, like, you expect it to be like, I don't know, it, like, the only thing that I ever heard about it before, like, my friend loaned me, loan me the book was, was like, it, it was not Kelly. Mm. Uh, it could have been Kelly, though. Maybe yeah. I should ask her for Nona, <laughs> um, because I would like to read it. Um, her. Oh, like, the only thing that I, probably also from Kelly... Uh, was just lesbian necromancers in space. And I was like, okay, what does that mean? Um, <laughs> then they're not even, only one of them's a necromancer. Only one of them's a necromancer. <laughs> she's like barely even a necromancer. She's she like a barely, bone animator. Oh, she, yeah, yeah. The she's other not like people, bringing yeah. people back to life. That's real. She's the bone, she's the bone one. And the other people do other types of necromancy. So. Um, and it's, it's all really good. And it's all really good. God. Yeah. yeah. Bone imagery, religious imagery. Yeah. All of the above. Especially in Harrow. But also, okay. it is the kind of book that ha- needs a glossary for the character names. Oh, I didn't oh, realize like, there was a glossary until oh, the very end right. of the book. <laughs> I was really only keeping track of people because she does this really convenient thing where all the people have their, like, house numbers disguised in their names. Yeah. Oh, what? Oh. Never, I did not know that. Oh. Wait. Like, what are examples? Uh, like, her name is, like, Ianthe Tridentarius because she's Tri because oh, she has three. three. And oh, there's also three of them rather than two of them because... <laughs> Well, you learned that in, like, the first, like, five yeah, okay. pages. <laughs> the first, like, like, the, like, not, like, the beginning of the first act. <laughs> no, I won't spoil it. It's very, I don't know, I like the tone. I like when writers give their characters a very distinct voice. Um, Which this has. Yes, very much. That's what I'm saying. Almost detriment. Sometimes uh, it's like a little it. too <laughs> up its own ass. How do you Occasionally. mean? Occasionally. Harrow. Was. Oh yeah, that's also because she's an asshole. Like, well, sure, but also like, no- <laughs> with left grief. No. Wait, what? There's like a. I'll see if I can find it. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay. Well, anyways, um, <laughs> the book basically follows. I'll give like a little uh inter like overview. It's like, it is like definitely sci-fi and fantasy at the same time because they are indeed in like a sci-fi like space colony or fucking something um also another thing yeah yeah, yeah. much more fantasy than sci-fi though it is yeah it's it, it doesn't give very sci-fi vibes but they are there's like there are necromancers which is true one of the one of the main characters the main character of the second book um i is... wanted to throw my phone against the wall no. i wanted to kill someone for real that is in my account Eminem lyric. It was not. No, I thought Wait. it was like I thought it was something from Lose Yourself. No, no cuz I, like, I remember I think there were showing this with the naming scheme and one of them was an yeah, Eminem lyric. Yeah, it probably correct. Wait, this is in like what is it? Is this like this Gideon is the a, Night? That took me way too long to understand. The night. Yeah. Quote, so I'm shut in here, walled in really, to prevent the nine houses becoming none house with left grief. And and here I thought this was like some some, wow it rhymes. Here I thought this was some really like deep traditional like Brandon Sanderson type stuff. No, dude, it's got like none house with none house with left (laughs) grief. I will say that is an outlier in how mad it made me. That was the maddest I got. (laughs) So is there? There's more. Uh, Is this a thing throughout the book? I would say there are maybe incredibly silly two or three per book that are. Punch. And they Truly just, it's crazy awful. because they just punch you in the fucking face because, like, I feel like the tone is, like, kind of, like, like, the vibe, and there's different, there's a different, the atmosphere, maybe, is very, like, noir, so you don't expect to get hit with no <laughs> of left grief, or yeah. Commander Wake Me Up Inside by Evanescence. Um, no, and, they, like, no, and they say Evanescence? They no. don't say Evanescence, but they do. Oh. They, someone is it's named. It's a symbol like, from like pop culture references. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, it's wild. Um, anyways. <laughs> but yeah, it's I a good thing that I it. like that sort of fantasy book because I feel like the way it's recommended is very non-commensurate with what it actually is. Because, like, yeah. although they are lesbians and it is, like, their relationship does define the book, the relationship is not really romantic. It's really, mm-hmm. truly for not. Ni- yeah. For so They're much of the first of, book. They just sort of, like, happen to be lesbians and also they hate each other. And also they, hate <laughs> other. Also they were the only two, like, kids that they, they grew up around only oh, each dude, other. It's so, so they had to have up. every single relationship that you would have with another kid only with each other. Um, anyways, is what I think. Um, (laughs) yeah, it's fucked up. Um, but, you know, if you're, I thought, me personally, I think it's a good transition for people looking to go from, like, you're, like, YA, like, if you're, like, you know, in elementary school when they were, like, you should read this book because you're in eighth grade. Um, (laughs) like, if you're looking to, like, go from, like, you should read this book because you're in 12th grade to, like, you should read this book because you're in college, I think it's a good, like, transition. Okay, (laughs) welcome to, hello, I'm a member of the has been reading above grade level since, like, Okay, me too, yeah, 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 we go to UCLA, like, (laughs) come on. Okay, but, but you know what I'm talking about. Like I will say, there's like one YA series that I have t- actively uh, not only tolerated but enjoyed. Um, Crazy. I, yeah, it is though, <laughs> um, and it's because it's by Naomi Novik, who I love. Keep Heart up the emoji. good work. Um, and it's called the Scholomance series. And if I uh, got that recommended to me by not you, one by of my not other me. friends. Okay, yeah. it's re- it's definitely YA. Okay, shit. Um, then I'll have to read it. But the prose is so readable, dude. Like I will, I like sometimes when I'm feeling really bad, I'll just like tear through the entire trilogy in like a day or two. Yeah, I it's, like, love it's doing that. So readable, dude. <laughs> um, the Marie Lou, like anything by Marie Lou, is like that for me. It's not queer. Like mo- I don't think any of her characters are queer, but um, or maybe they are in like the later books. But, yeah, incredibly readable and also just, like, well-paced. Yeah. Anyways. Scholomance series does have queer people in it, if that's, like, a major uh, selling yeah. point for you. The main character is bisexual. There are a couple side characters nice. who are also queer. Let's go. It, it is really good. And it ha- it hits, like, all the good Naomi Novik themes. It's definitely just an extended meditation on what it means to walk away from Omelas, etc., etc. From what? Uh, okay, so, so <laughs> Ursula K. Le Guin has this short story called The Ones Who Walk Away from Omelas, uh, and it's about a beautiful, shining city where, like, everything is happy, and it's a utopia, and everything is beautiful, like, it, it described in, like, quite realistic terms, and then the twist about it is that at the center of it, it, it all depends on the suffering of an innocent oh, child. Oh, okay, yeah. Like, just the unremitting squalid misery Never mind, of this I one have child. I read this one. Um, and so, Naomi Novik loves to do books that are just fucking obvious meditations on uh, what your ethical action should be in this situation, and it's always tear down Omelas. Oh my god, true. Um, Sounds like I have to read, read the Scholomance series. Read books by Naomi Novik. Yeah. I really liked uh, Spinning Silver. I didn't like Uprooted as much. Femurers, fine. It Summer is definitely a, um, a spin on Huck, Master and Commander, but, like, with dragons. It's okay. really just Master and... It's, like, what, what if is dragons master, were, like, Master boats. and Commander? Oh, Master and Commander is a meticulously researched, lovingly, you know, like, crafted depic- depiction of life in the British Navy during the mm-hmm. Napoleonic Wars mm-hmm. through the eyes of the commander of a boat um, named... Jack Aubrey. Nice. Uh, and the prose isn't that great, but the boat facts are un- impeccable. <laughs> <laughs> this guy loves boats. Seven this ten guy boat loves facts. boats. <laughs> they're not okay, there are not gay people in it. Um, Boo. I mean, it, is, it does build a classic, like, the central relationship in it is between two men who are like each other's closest confidants, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you know, hmm. you never know. That's it's. Hmm. I don't want to give books props for being so misogynistic. The cover oh. Again. oh no! I know. Okay, yeah. Well, like I know the Navy was super misogynistic, so I don't really want to right. put it on the author because, like, it wouldn't really make sense for the kind of vibe yeah. he's trying to do for there to be like 
gay people or oh yeah. women sorry women women, yeah. like women. Like, uh, fleshed out female characters on the ship so like i get yeah. it um pretty funny though pretty funny though um if i can i don't, I don't know what the series is it called just is it just called like the ninth series or the Lock Lock's tomb. tomb yeah um i really i love how queer a lot of queer media i don't know if this is a trend in, like, mainstream media, but just, like, the kind of stuff I consume in, like, queer books or, like, queer webtoons even. There's a, there's so many, like, stories about queer people in relation to, like, the concept of death or, like, supernatural stuff. Because uh, I know you were talking about talking earlier about a book where this guy, uh, I know that wasn't queer, but it's this guy who, like, takes up um, the mantle of the Grim Reaper after that one dies. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a webtoon on my list with exactly that premise, but they're gay. No. So <laughs> it's it's just the webtoon of a guy who like I don't know if he's replacing a singular Grim Reaper or if he's just like one of a bunch of Grim Reapers. But the whole story is he's taking up this new um, role as a Grim Reaper, and he needs like an escort because he's like young and he doesn't know how to really control himself and his powers yet. Mm-hmm. So and his escort turns mm-hmm. out to be this vampire. Whoa, who shit. has long pink hair. So I was like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's giving such, like, it, it, it feels like it's such a, it, it just feels like peak webtoon, that kind of, like, dynamic. <laughs> it really sounds like a webtoon. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. The Grim Reaper character also just has, like, blue-green hair. I think True. it's, well, I think it's, like, in locks and stuff, so that's, that's... <laughs> I've just been imagining Thanatos from Hades. <laughs> Thanatos from Hades? Yeah. There's a character in Hades who has that exact hair? No. I'm saying before you provided this description. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, well I, I, I have to bring up the name, but I, I think it's called River Street or something. But I, I that's just a pattern I've been seeing that a lot of um, queer webtoons especially have weirdly a lot of supernatural themes. And it might be related to what you said about historically maybe vampires have been associated with queer culture a lot or something. Yeah, and also I just feel like that kind of genre fiction is very popular. I don't know. Yeah. Up there with the romance novel. Oh, well, yeah. There are many <laughs> great <laughs> examples. Supernatural shit. So just like on the show Supernatural. Just like on the show Supernatural. <laughs> so many fucking seasons on that show. They stopped, though. They did stop. Sent them to Super Sent Hell, I think. Super yep. Hell. They, buried got your, they buried your gays. <laughs> they really buried their gays. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> what an experience. Yeah, I didn't even watch it all over the end. I, I tried three different Why? times. Three different Dude, times. I watched, I was like, I'm going to watch season one, and then I gave up on episode 22 of a 23 episode season because yeah, I just but... did not have the, t- <laughs> I did not care anymore. That's fair. I, was but like, I, would, I do love, like, anthology style, like, Monster of the Week. Yeah, Monster of the Week. Oh. It's my fave. Like, fuck. Kind of a monster. Well, I don't know. I guess I like. I watched like a couple seasons of House, which is like, what if the Monster of the Week was the <laughs> Doctor? Was, was this disease? Guy? Oh, well, I, I, thought, I thought House was like the main back. <laughs> like he kind of acts <laughs> like it. Yeah, but the Monster of the Week, it has to change every week, whereas he is there every week. Yeah, well, that's so fair. He, he wouldn't fit the genre. He's the monster of every week. Heart emoji. <laughs> <laughs> That's good for him. Ouchie wouchie. Ouchie wouchie. <laughs> what? I don't know. He's just like a doctor, but he's an he's asshole. Like well, yeah, I know. Yeah. But he's like, like the worst. He's a I've never even watched it. I've just seen like clips Dude, every once in a while. I love watching seeing people be like, wow, they weren't kidding about the medical malpractice. <laughs> yeah, literally. I was just so like, oh, much medical, medical malpractice. Trauma. Like, they break into people's houses every week for no fucking reason. What? As a doctor, what? Are you doing? What, what do you need to do to do that? Like, <laughs> for what reason? As a doctor, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen Supernatural, but I know because I, I think uh, I didn't grow up around that around the time it was like really popular. Um, but the only reason I know about the bury your the bury your gaze ending where they end up in super hell is because. Tumblr it, 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 it was it was a it was a yeah. whole Tumblr drama and it happened yeah. simultaneously with like the elect 
like that's the old Putin election. Day. Yeah, the ele- the like uh, Russia interfered with the <laughs> like the twenty sixteen no, election. Thing was actually, there were unfounded rumors that Putin had died. Oh, oh yeah, he, like, yeah. Contracted a serious I illness. I didn't know that. <laughs> it's the only reason I know about it. Uh, there's a there's just a YouTube account that like summarizes all the Tumblr yeah. dramas Why? that have that have happened. Why have a Tumblr account summarize the tum- the Tumblr drama when you can just experience it? Real. <laughs> First I hand. love when Tumblr fucking explodes. <laughs> it's my favorite activity. <laughs> has, has, favorite has time has, to be on the internet. Has it happened recently? Not that recently, I say. I um, to remember like the times recently when like okay. people have been fixated Gondra, on one thing. Walrus and fairy. I God do. save me oh, from the walrus yeah. and the fairy. Would you be more surprised to find a walrus or a fairy at your door? Knocking on your Knocking door. Knocking on your door. Sorry. A fairy probably because. See, that's what I said, and everyone was like, a fucking walrus, oh, oh, but no. If you think about it logically, I think people explained it in a way that made, they justified their case. They justified like, their case, but First I, of all, how did the walrus knock on the door? Someone it, it, else it knocked just, like, in the left. It kind of just, slept its, oh, slept its fur against the door. Um, <laughs> unless you, like... There was some... Oh, God. What? Because it it's not like, like someone dressed as a fairy. Somebody was... Listen, So somebody... I need to be able to identify it as a fairy, which means it needs to violate the laws of nature somehow. Otherwise, I'm just going to be like, that's person a person with, in a costume. Person with wings. I'm going to be like, cool wings, bro. Did you make them yourself? <laughs> That's uh, true. You wouldn't. You wouldn't think. I'd fairy be like first. sick fairy right, cosplay. Yeah. Is it from Genshin? Yeah. <laughs> is it from Genshin? <laughs> this is my Somebody, go-to source oh of all cosplays wait. I don't recognize. Some Somebody... Genshin cosplay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and then the fairy would die immediately from shame. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> How does the fairy know what Genshin is? How does the fairy know to knock on a door? Then I don't know because like fae and shit don't aren't they. <laughs> Fucking with people all the time. And you know how you fuck with people? Not on doors. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that fairies troll on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, should we talk more about books? <laughs> well, we can talk about a Genshin Impact. I don't know. I've never played that game. Um, I can shout out some books. I really yeah. like Six of Crows, the way that they do. First of all, relationships. Sorry, is that one the Lee Bardugo one? Yes. Two that I always confuse. Correct. Um, her first series, if I remember correctly, does not have a lot of queer rep. It's like your basic like hero's journey, YA girl protagonist. Um, chosen one thing. Uh, and she's in a love triangle between the big dark evil king and her best childhood best friend. So you know you can fill in the blanks. Um, but Six of Crows is fun because I feel like the relationships were actually a B plot, um, whereas some books make them uh, like focus on them a lot more and they like kind of built up slowly. That's also because it focuses pretty equally on like around six, if I remember correctly, like six characters or so. Um, so you don't get as oh, much time. Crows? But, yeah, exactly. Okay, so it is. Yeah, right. I don't know. Surely it is. It. I don't remember. Uh, I think it's six, but I don't want to take five minutes to try and name all six of them, so. Uh, John, Paul, George, Ringo, Grisha. <laughs> Grisha, <laughs> the other one, is wild. Um, uh, and also, they put gay people in it. They put gay people in it? They put, did they put trans people in it? I can't remember. Herm. Okay. I don't know. Gay, they've got gay people. One of the one of the relationships that ends up happening is gay people. So and it's good. Yeah, my phone's all fucked up on the back. Would Only you, in the back though. Would you say it's like big? It's a really like high fantasy type. Oh, that, that um, requires getting into the high fantasy low fantasy distinction, which is useful when books fit those categories neatly, and then it's not useful when they don't. Because like I was thinking about the Goblin Emperor. Um, not because it has queer people in it, but it really has the energy like it should, so I might just be forgetting Real. some. Um, and it's like a palace intrigue sort of thing. So you'd be like, oh, high fantasy. Like, the main character is a, a goblin. Their tension with, like, the tension between elves and goblins yeah. is, like, a major goblin theme in the story. But it also has, like, a strong concern <laughs> for normal people, kind of. Like, the servants have names, stuff like that. Right. Um, and so is that high fantasy or low fantasy? It sort of isn't a meaningful distinction uh, in some cases. I thought high fantasy was just 
high, it's high fantasy if it exists in like an entirely different universe or world, and it's oh. low fantasy if it exists in a in like a modern world or like historically historical world that's pretty similar to what happened in real life. That's just what I thought high fantasy and low fantasy are. That could still be a like helpful distinction for people who are like, because then that also like changes it in some cases would like change the tone that you approach it with. Yeah. yeah. In that case, Six of Crows would be lo- low fantasy. It still but, takes place in but, a pretty... Well, I don't know. I feel like the original series would be like high fantasy because they kind of make okay. the distinction. They, I don't know. I feel like they world build a lot in a way that makes it distinct from something yeah. well, else. But then Six okay, of Crows kind of goes modern. I'm going to try and some Okay, more. perfect. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because the Queen's I don't really Thief know what's series, happening anyways. The first of which starts out yet way. The, the Queen's Thief series. The first of sure. which is definitely why, but then after that it's like all about politics. I really like books that are just like <laughs> fantasy politics. Um, and the vibes are definitely taken kind of from ancient Greece, um, kind of from medieval Europe. Um, but like, okay, if I say medieval Europe, you'll get the wrong vibe. It's, like, sort of ancient Possibly. Greece inspired, but there are, like, clots and guns and glass windows. Gotta love that. <laughs> um, I do love clots and guns. And so it definitely guns. is a world where, like, magic kind of exists, but in small enough ways that it, you can completely disbelieve in it and it would not change your experience of the world. Um, and it is focused entirely on, like, what we would think of as, like, real-life concerns, but it is... It does also take place in an alternate universe where, like, the countries have different names. So, like, would that be high or low fantasy? Right, yeah. yeah. Elves don't have guns. This is a, they, ma- a maybe major they elf do. Fact. What they, if like, they did, though? How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but when I say picture an elf, what's the elf holding? Probably not a gun. A gun. It could no, be I a think gun. It's probably a gun. It's a gun, but it's got, like, leaves on it. Uh, <laughs> gun with leaves on it. Gun with leaves on it. So, you're wrong, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I read the Queen's Thief series to prove me wrong. Okay. Um, that sounds like a plan. Um, well, two of them. Well, one um, of pretty vibes. The reason I asked about, like, high fantasy specifically is, like, a lot of the books on my list have a pretty... Not, 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 not a huge distinction, but I think there's a good variety between what is usually considered low fantasy and what's considered high fantasy. Because, um... I. <clears throat> Two of the authors I um, love the most um, explore, like, different, like, um, polls on that maybe spectrum. So I think F.T. Lukens, um, who wrote um, Spellbound, um, I think they, ex- it's like, it's a, I think it's a non-binary person and a guy who, they, they started as kind of like a rivals to lovers type thing because, um, they're meant they're both like supposed to be um like spell casters but only the only one of them actually has like the powers for it and the other just like has a more i think innate power that that he hasn't unlocked yet so it really starts out as a rivals to it really starts out as like a rivalry because the two their two mentors are also just like natural rivals um but i i i love that um the non-binary person is, I think, Korean because I think, I think even now there's still so there's so little East Asian queer rep in books, and I think um, portraying this world where magic just exists, but it's a pretty it's still a pretty similar world to what we're living in right now. It's set in a city, and they I think tackle like classism and they tackle um, um what it's like to be like a foster kid, and they handle all these real issues that we go through, but mm, I think they, uh, it, it, I, I think what would be considered low fantasy like that is helpful in its own way because it sort of shows queer people that in a world that's already pretty close to what reality is, like it's still possible to live like a fulfilling and um authentic life because clearly if you see queer characters like this and especially trans characters like this just existing and like being powerful characters and um like thriving in their own way i think that uh just gives 
that can give queer people a lot of hope, especially in a world where it feels more and more like um, just being ourselves is be, is like an unrealistic goal. And there's so many boundaries in the way of us um, just wanting to live the way that we um, want to. So at least depicting that possibility, even in fictional books, I think it can be a sort of inspiration for how we approach like our, our real lives as um, trans people. Yeah, I think that's also some of the <clears throat> like power or like, not to say benefit, but like benefit of like, like something that speculative fiction can do really well is like, it's like far away from reality, but the themes in it are still broadly applicable and yeah. you, can, you can get a lot of inspiration from them. I think I might have lied. I think that's Love, Simon was not the first uh, <laughs> queer book that I read. I think it was probably something from Sean David Hutchinson. It might have been We Are the Ants. Um, I think that one fucked me up. Uh, Sean David Hutchinson is interesting. Because I've never the heard two, of this person in my life. I don't know. It kind of sounds like <laughs> I definitely found the book at the library. Um, went to the library a lot as a kid. Um, we Are the Ants, uh, I don't know, both of his books that I've read, which are We Are the Ants and A Complicated Love Story Set in Space, are interesting because they're also, like, queer people in supernatural settings, but the supernatural setting is happening, like, only to them. It's, like, incredible, like, if we're talking about high fantasy, low fantasy, uh, if we're bringing that, that back, um, <laughs> it's, like, very low fantasy to the point where the, the thing is happening only to the one person, which is, like... I don't know, something something going on there. Um, yeah, We Are the Ants is, one, is on my list of books that fuck. Uh, <laughs> it, it is called that. I also have movies that fuck. Um, yeah, because it's just a fucking banger. Um, I don't remember what it's about. It's about this kid who gets kidnapped by aliens, uh, and he keeps getting kidnapped by aliens, and then they're like, ooh, you get to decide if the world lives or dies. And it's definitely, I'm going to hazard a guess, but I think this is a pretty good guess, that it's a broad allegory for suicide. Because um, he's also, like, his character is also established that way. Um, but I don't know, it was just very good. He's like, Sean David Hutchinson, ha Hutchinson has this very, like, distinct tone, I guess. And it's just, it's just good. It aligns very much with what I like to read. I don't read what I found. Complicated love story set in space is like weird. It's like they're complicated even. Yeah, no way. Um, they've got like memory. It's like an amnesia story, so I don't remember a whole lot about it. Maybe they gave me the amnesia. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so they're not ants. They're not. <laughs> I just remember that the I, it's the, apparently this is in my brain because the um l the last bit of, the last line of the book is like why was he talking about ants? <laughs> Anyways, the last line of the book was like, we are the ants and we'll keep marching on. I was like, okay, sure. Oh, you, um, sure you sure are. You sure buddy? Because, <laughs> uh, like, aliens, they're up there and, you know, far away, so small. Oh. Probably. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I remember, so. Real. There we go. There's my Sean David Hutchinson plug, because that was probably one of the first queer books that I read. Or that I remember. <laughs> I mean, honestly, we're running out of time, so I think I am going to have to wrap it up. Real talk. Okay. Uh, and Should then talk we... your ear off about the hands of the emperor after okay. the episode. <laughs> Ready? It's a really good book, though. It's, uh, <laughs> Damn! it's like a really important Arrow character, and a lot of the uh, sequel to it is about like him trying to define like what, how he wants to live in the world as an Arrow person uh, in a society that doesn't have a really set like relationship locus. For arrow people, oh, and it's so good. So good. <laughs> okay, well, shit, I'm gonna put it on my story graph. Briefly, um, before we end, I will say read Gender Queer. It is as good as everyone says. It's very good. It's a little graphic novel, and it's a short read, and it's on the banned books list. That's all. Um, one thing I one thing I want to recommend is if you're, I mean, I I think queer literature has come a really long way, and I think we're seeing more and more diversity and like the types of queer people that are represented in in like published books but there's still some there there's still some um I think barriers to entry in that regard because um I think even the even published books still take a like a relatively long process to do and there's 
like so many barriers that can prevent you from accessing those books like for example but they cost like 20 to 25 dollars each and depending on your bookstore or your library whatever go to bookman's or, or, i fucking love bookman's <laughs> or they could even be banned in some places so um i think if you're looking for more <laughs> i think if you're if you're looking for even more representation i think a great honestly a great place to look would be webtoon or similar like um internet uh platforms um queer media like that because i think cuz um number one those are just free to access and uh they're just <laughs> what are you doing? I, I, I can't I'm trying I don't to get out of them. trouble making the heart with my hands like this It took me a minute. I'm already losing it. <laughs> they're free. <laughs> they're 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 free to access and they're um created then they can be created by just anyone who like has some ability to draw or write so they're much easier to publish they require very little um uh barriers to entry so they're a much better way to explore a more ver a more varied like um queer spectrum of representation uh, among my uh, among right. the <laughs> Minecraft. there are webtoons that talk about like polyamory um uh and i think a lot uh maybe maybe some that discuss um detransitioning in a more like honest and like less i think um <laughs> weaponized <laughs> way yeah. um and they a lot of them are able to tackle more um, heavy topics too, like how, um, like um, sexual assault or maybe abuse or um, maybe uh, struggling to uh, be a queer person in an like abusive household, that kind of stuff. I think those webtoons are there uh, because they can be made by like a wider demographic demographic of people. They can more authentically represent the the experiences that a lot of us have. So. Yeah, obviously still consume queer literature however you want to, but webtoons are also a great alternative if you're looking for more. So that's what I wanted to yeah. say. Also, someone in Outright wrote a book. It's called A World yes, Above the Wind yes, yes. by Jessica Rose. Go check it out. You can check it out on, what's it? what was the website that she gave? Book something? It's on Bookshop. Google. That's all. That's the last plug. <laughs> it's not the last plug. Oh, plug with that, okay. I've been JQ. <laughs> Plugging ourselves. Yes. I've been Emma. I've been Mark. And it's time for the plugs. You can follow <laughs> outright on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, the website formerly known as Twitter. You can read our articles at outrightnewsmag.org. That's right, spelled W R I T E. I think the moral of tonight read banned books. Read banned, read banned books. books. Thank yeah. you. <laughs>